In this episode, I'm heading out to Kansas with my good buddies for a November rut hunt. The expectations and excitement are high as we set up camp, not knowing what's in store for the next morning. Day one is all about scouting. We spend the majority of the day looking at properties we can hunt, glassing up deer, and checking for size. Our first hunt is in the evening of day one, and it's time to see what a Kansas rut hunt is all about. I think I might try to move. Seems as I'm surrounded by cows. Man, I wish I had a field arrow or something to take a crack at some of these squirrels. You get your limit around here pretty easy. Yeah, there's a lot of cows in here. We're gonna have to come up with plan B. All of the timber in here, cows have access to. And I thought there was CRP fields that were maybe fenced off, but it doesn't look that way. Seems to be cows every place I go. I'm gonna walk out to the road and come up with plan B. It is heating up. All right, we got plan B. Same, same parcel, same block, just a different part of it. We stopped to talk to the landowner, good guy. He gave us a couple tips on where to go. So we're gonna go get in there and try to get set up and try to capitalize on some historic information but it is hot it's supposed to be 70 degrees today she's kind of cooking here we go that's why you should be in the woods I just walked out from the truck and took an eight-point stand in this cut bean field. Looking at me. And he runs back to where I'm gonna go. Well, I guess I'm gonna follow him. I'm just gonna try to creep into the woods here. I don't have to go very far. The boundaries. Maybe 150, 200 yards that way. So I just want to get into this, what looks like it may be a transition area. I gotta figure out what side of this creek I want to be on. Hmm. 
sure. I just figured out what to do. That buck that just crossed the bean field is bedded in this creek. I just spotted him. The wind is like just missing him right now. I'm going to try and get some footage of him. And then I'm going to move up and just hope that he comes down the creek when he gets up. And I'll get a shot over this bank. He's not a monster, but uh, if he does that, I'll take a shot at him because it'll be pretty cool. That was in there it was not the one that went across the field. This one was way bigger. He was well outside his ears and his G3 was split on his right side. He just got up and went the other way though. He might just re-bed it. And that was cool seeing that buck. And I don't think the video is going to do him justice. I got my glasses on him when he stood up and was walking away. And he was outside his ears. And his G3 on his right side was split. I was really contemplating whether or not I should chase after him. Maybe get out in this bean field, run up there and try and get ahead of him. But I come to the conclusion that this seems like a really good spot. And I'm in Kansas. That's not the only buck. There's a good chance that a different one could come by me. Maybe from the other way. Maybe from that way. So I'm just going to park it here. the one that was down there that was bedded. He came back following a doe. I grunted and this little doe pops out right here. Oh, she's staring at me. She's right there. Meanwhile he's over here making a scrape following this doe. And I couldn't like focus on him calling to him because this doe was right here. I just had to freeze. Oh, wow. Wow. Man, there's deer in here. Now we got a dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we hot? <laughs> The morning of day three, we decide to glass a cut cornfield in hopes of gaining more intel on the buck from the previous night. To our surprise, the buck pops out of a small thicket and runs across the field after spotting us on the hill. The buck heads toward another patch of woods, but the wind isn't right to hunt it. He's gonna head to the, I bet you he heads to the south side. Yep, he's turning. He's going to this block to our left. Maybe go with me. Yep, he's an eight. 
with the south winds for the day before predicted to continue. We let him go for today and leave to try our luck on another property. Today we're back where we were at yesterday. It's supposed to be a southeast wind, but it's super calm. And it's supposed to be hot today. I'm gonna sit right close to where I saw those bucks and the turkeys cross. And uh, hopefully we'll have a repeat. Only this time, maybe I'll get an arrow off. Darren's going down to the south a little bit and he's going to sit over that cut corn where the deer were feeding down into. Hopefully between the two of us we can be in the action and get one down today. It's the morning of November 8th. Darren and I are in here after that big eight point. This is the spot where we thought he ran into yesterday. We're supposed to have a north wind today, so we came in on the south edge of this piece. And it's really brushy in here. Locust and branches about head height. If you kneel down, you can see pretty good. So I was getting set up this morning, basically on the ground, because the trees are so thorny. And as I was doing that, I was scraping out beneath me, and I had a buck come in, right 10 yards. He looked like he had a decent body. Then he got nervous and bounded off. It's been about 30 minutes since that, that happened. I'm thinking about doing a rattling sequence here this morning before the wind picks up. So if we can call in another one.
struggling to capture this on film because it's just crazy in here. So I did that rattling sequence and a big eight point came in all puffed up. The closest he got was maybe 35 but he was behind a tree and then he just wouldn't keep coming to my left. He got nervous and he started to fade away. I never had a shot, not once. And then after that, broken off buck came crumping into my north. After some does, he was a three on one side and the other side was broke. So then I thought they worked off. I stood up to change the battery and right behind me was two doves like right there she blew once they, they didn't bust super hard but better pay attention because obviously in the action here at 11 o'clock i get a quick glimpse of a buck at 40 yards i glass the area with my binos and pick up his tines sticking above the brush. Yep, I just confirmed. 40 yards, I could see his tines. He's three up top on one of the sides, but they're not very tall. I'm thinking he's a pass mark. For two hours, I watched the buck. I moved to the other side of this tree because the sun was lighting me up. If he stands up, he'd probably spot me pretty easy. So I just moved out here to the shadows. Eventually, a doe walks behind me and beds down. The buck stands up and heads my way. Unfortunately, he is young and not one I'm looking to harvest. Still, this encounter proved to be a highlight of the trip. As the buck approaches my location, he catches the bedded doe's scent and forgets I'm in the world. He passes within feet of me while circling downwind of her. The buck bumps the doe out of her bed, and away they go. A few hours later, a group of does pass by at 35 yards. But there isn't a buck behind them. I give it another hour, then decide to shift for the evening hunt. 100 yards to the west, I set up in an Osage Orange, overlooking a creek crossing. An exciting day four ends without a deer on the ground. Yeah, 
I look like an angel right now. I know, it's no big deal. It's uh, one o'clock. I haven't seen anything, no signs. I'm gonna try and go to the southwest. Back where I saw all those deer yesterday. Well, that's gonna about do it for day five, Kansas. <sighs> this ground hunting is not for the fate of art. <sighs> this is a special kind of pain. <sighs> Over the next two days, we spend time scouting from the truck. Fixing flat tires and hunting hard for that elusive encounter with a buck. In the end, we leave Kansas with an empty cooler, but come home with a truck full of good memories. Thanks for watching.